Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. We are in P5JS and we're taking a look at clipping masks. This is useful in generative art. You can put shapes inside of shapes, images inside of shapes, effects inside of shapes like this pearl and noise. I'll show you a few examples from my own work. This is a JPEG that I'm importing and putting inside of a circle. It was a square JPEG. I'm talking about this star shape pattern here and then there's another pattern here inside of a circle and another pattern here inside of a square and another pattern here. All of those were JPEGs that I imported, resized, and put inside of other shapes. Here's another example. This is Perlin noise inside of a circle here and here. And then this one, these quads are using Perlin noise as well and each quad has its own Perlin noise field. There are a few things that I'm using to create these effects. One is called a mask, another is called a clip function, and then there's also an erase function that I'm using on these words. For the example I'm using with you today, uh, there's a link in the description so you can use this as a reference. So the first one I'll go over is this one right here. I'm loading an image of a farmer. This is the trader from Scrap Mechanic. That's a square image. Then here I resize the image to be able to fit in this space. Uh, and then I create an invisible canvas with create graphics. I'm going to call that canvas mask seven. I've got seven different canvases going here. And then we're going to use this function, which is native to JavaScript. It's not part of the P5 library. And this is necessary before we use this clip function. I'm applying this function only to this canvas that I just created. So that's the mask seven dot. And then I'm going to call this thing CTX seven, context seven. Now, after I do that, I can call this clip function. And there's stuff that happens before the clip function and stuff that happens after the clip function. So the before the clip function is the triangle. And what I want inside of the triangle is going to happen after the clip function. So the mask.7 triangle is putting a triangle on my invisible canvas. I call the clip function. Then I place my farmer image on that invisible canvas. And then I place my invisible canvas onto my regular canvas. Now I could change that from a triangle to a circle. Let's comment this out in that in. And now you see I've got a circle with the farmer inside of a circle. Now, when I create my invisible canvas, I could make a canvas that is exactly the same size as my regular canvas, width and height. But in this case, I chose to make a small canvas. And so then I've got to be thinking about where I'm placing my image inside of my small canvas. And this is showing where I'm placing the invisible canvas. So I can move this over to say 320 and you'll see it shift over to the left. Now there's a second way to show an image inside of a shape, and that is with a mask. So in this example, which is up here, I resize my image, same as before. I'm creating a new uh, invisible canvas, same as before. I'm drawing my triangle, same as before, so none of that is different. I have not needed to call this function here in this case. And here I'm doing this mask function on the image rather than on the canvas. So it's image.mask and in parentheses, this is my canvas. And I believe this mask only works with images. I'm not certain of that. But after I do that, now I place the image onto the canvas. Remember up here, I was placing my invisible canvas onto the canvas, but here I'm placing the image after I've done this mask function. So that's a second way to do this. Now, there is a difference between the two. If I comment this out and have both the circle and the triangle, you'll notice that it creates a keyhole effect. Both the triangle and the circle are being used for the image. But if I try to do the same thing with this one, comment out the triangle here, and I have both the circle and the triangle, only the most recent one is getting the clipping applied to it. So just something interesting to note about that. So that means if you are able to use this mask function, you've got a little bit more to work with than you do if you're using the clipping function. The next one I'll go over is this circle inside of a triangle. So again, I'm creating an invisible canvas. 
Uh, now I am using that canvas.getContext2D. I put a rectangle on my invisible canvas. I call the clip function after the rectangle, and then I place the circle after the clip function. So now the circle is being clipped inside the rectangle. And finally, I put my invisible canvas onto the canvas. Now I can reverse the circle and the rectangle. If I put comment these out and this in, and then we'll comment this out and this in, and now I've got a rectangle inside of a circle. So just showing you that that can work either way. Next, let's look at these circles down here. So I'm calling a function called cloudy circle, and the 100 is where it's going to be placed on the x-axis. So looking at the cloudy circle function, it takes the x position. I've got a random RGB. I'm creating graphics, just like I have before. And then I'm going to make my circle. Now there's a difference with the Perlin noise because I'm loading pixels. I don't need the clip function because right now there are no pixels on the, the invisible canvas except for that circle. And so when I load pixels and then alter those pixels, it's only altering the pixels that are already on the canvas in that circle. So I load pixels and use some noise to change the color of those pixels. This isn't a lesson on Perla noise. I've done several videos before about how to create a Perla noise field. I update the pixels and again uh, realize that all of this is on the invisible canvas. And then I place my image of my invisible canvas onto the canvas. Now, an interesting thing about this is that I didn't need to use this clip. So I've commented it out because it's useless. But the other interesting thing is let's say I did call a background and now you can see there's a bunch of stuff here because uh, there is no clip. So you might think, oh, we need to add the clip, right? Well, funny thing happens, if I add the clip, it's still like this. I tried moving the background up above this. That doesn't do anything extra. Uh, so basically, you just can't have a background. I don't know why it works that way. It's kind of weird but you don't need this or this. Okay, let's move on to this over here. So this one is function watercolor. It's debatable whether this actually looks like a watercolor, but uh, it's my attempt. It's uh, a bunch of circles with really low alpha being placed. So for this, as before, we create our invisible canvas. We're using the canvas.getContext2D we are placing our circle, we're doing the clip, and then we're doing stuff on the canvas inside the circle. First I call a light gray background, then I use these RGB values and I create a for loop of 700 circles it's going to draw. I fill those circles with RGB values, although I'm adding some variety to them. Uh, it's the R plus or minus 10, and the G plus or minus 10, the B plus or minus 10. The alpha is only 10. Then I'm drawing some kind of smallish circles. These are not really visible because they have got low alpha and they're all overlapping with each other. So that's what's creating this kind of smoky effect. If I only drew 100 of these, you would see it was a lot lighter. So after I've drawn all 700, um, those are still on my invisible canvas. Then I have to place my invisible canvas onto the canvas, and that's what I'm doing here. Now the final example I have here is a little more complicated. So I start the same way, create graphics, create the context 2D thing. Um, I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm calling the clip function, and then the things that are after the clip function are what's going to go inside of this rectangle. So I'm filling with the circle, that's this green circle right here, and then I'm placing this invisible canvas onto my canvas. Now, if I didn't do any of the rest of this stuff, let me comment all of this out, this is what you get. So let's comment all that back in. And now what I'm doing is I'm creating 
yet another canvas. I'm creating a rectangle and then I'm using this new function called erase. I haven't talked about the erase function. Everything that happens after the erase function is going to remove stuff from the canvas and show the background of the canvas. So I create some text with a text size of 200 and that's what I'm doing here. And then after I've done that, then I can call the no erase so that it stops erasing stuff. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, if it's going to show the background only, then why am I seeing this green circle here? Well, that's because the background it's showing is on this canvas, Mask 3. So Mask 3 doesn't have that circle on it. That circle was originally drawn on the Mask 4 canvas, and now it's on my regular canvas. So now I can place my Mask 3 canvas onto the regular canvas, and it's going to be placed on top of the previously placed canvas. So that's how I'm creating this effect. Now I could also have, say, an image back here, uh, maybe some sort of pattern of leaves or something, and that would definitely be more interesting than having this circle back here. So those are all the examples I wanted to go over with you. I am definitely not an expert in this stuff. I'm still trying to figure this out. For more on this, I would recommend watching these two videos, one by Jeff Thompson on masking images, and this one, Masking Effects by Kazuki Umeda. I'll leave a link to those two videos in the video description. Again, there's a link to this code in the video description in case you want it for a reference. If you know more than me on this subject and have some helpful tips, uh, please leave that in the video description comments. If you've liked this video, you can give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.